to me, you know, starting ethanol in the performance world back in the 90s, early 90s, doing it for over 24 years, this has been an enlightenment to my career and seeing um, all my dreams come to a fruition where now we've, we've broadened our spectrum to where I fought to have just certain venues use it and now all venues are using it. So it's, it's a big, um, big stride and, and like I said, I'm, I'm super proud to be part of it. I started back in 1992. Um, Built a plant in Wyoming, uh, had a young son that I bought a 1969 GTO for, and he thought he needed to get in trouble on the street. And in opening the plant, we decided that we'd let him race instead of dealing with the law and losing his license. So we put him on the track, and in opening the ethanol plant, when we got to the track, we seen the methanols and the gasolines and stuff like that, and I said, you know, we produce ethanol. It's a fuel additive. We're going to run ethanol. So, in that year, we started and we started on the farm. We had we actually had a farm that we was farming along with the ethanol plant, and we actually built the car and the engine in the shed out of the farm, and we actually started using the ethanol from production and testing and trying to get it right, you know, to find the, the fine tune for it, and um, it happened. So from that point on when we started being rather successful at the track, we started getting attention. So it grew from there. A, a young man named Paul Dana uh, wa was involved in following motorsports as a writer, as a sports writer. And he had a dream of wanting to drive an IndyCar at some point, someday. And so he chased after that and became a part of the Infinity Series. And when he did that, then he actually chased me down because he wanted to run, he wanted to run ethanol. So he chased me down and I worked hand in hand with Paul in trying to uh, help him get Infinity to accept the change and be able to run the ethanol in the Infinity series. We were successful there and as he grew in that series, he promoted himself. Uh, he went around the country, he talked, he went to the hill. I followed him and I acted as his technical support guy in the back of the room. So he delivered the message and he was very good at it. And then I was able to help him by answering the technical questions. We grew enough interest and he grew enough interest in, in wanting to move it to Indy. So negotiations started there. And they entrusted me enough to get me involved in making the changeover because I was successful in doing it in another venue. And one of the guys that ran as a president of uh, I, uh, Indy Race Operations, he was the head of Indianapolis Race Operations, was a good friend of mine because his dad was a drag racer and that's what we did and he was a professional drag racer so chad it was it was an easy end to get into indy and from there they introduced me to the guys honda the guys who were it was a spec engine and they introduced me to elmore marine who actually was building the spec engines because when we introduced it, it was 2007 and that was a year of change to where everybody ran the exact same motor and then we made the change to ethanol so everybody had the same fuel. So I got involved with everybody at that point, worked with Honda and, and we worked the tune-ups out and just as I did with talking to some of the guys that were involved in this venue in the last couple of days, answered some of the technical questions to help them get the tune-up right and then we worked it forward from there and in showing success became part of their testing, just became an intricate part of that and we actually produced and provided the fuel from a plant that I had, was part owner in in Wyoming and the volume of gallons in two, 2007 was 124,000 gallons to the Indy League that year and I provided, inspected, hand blended every drop of it and from there we, we kind of ballooned once again and becoming the guys, the ethanol guys, you know, and from that it just it kept growing. Ethanol is a non-corrosive, it's, it's, it's an environmentally friendly fuel. It provides higher octane, better performance. Um, it, it's just a better all the way around fuel. It's, it's tuning um, aspects are a little bit different from some of the other fuels, but through the course of experience, we've been able to go over those hurdles and bring people around so we can put them in the window that they need to be. Um, it's economic, 
it's it's made here in the U.S. It's it's something that uh, it was the right thing to do. So, all in all, the ethanol is it has proven itself with the values that it has of being environmentally friendly. You know, high octane. It's an oxygen. It's it's non corrosive. I mean, the best of all worlds. I was a, kind of the pioneer, and to see where I, where I was able to take it and see the guys that have picked it up and are expounding from there, I, I'm just super excited because it's, it's not stopped growing. You know, it's not something that I, my dream is not over. It, it, it's being continued and carried on by somebody else, and that's exciting. And for, for the general public, I think it's gonna help us on some of the myths that are out there, misconceptions and being able to use the fuel at the pump in our domestic cars. And so this, this whole venue and what we're doing now is gonna help us change the, the mindset, I think, because we've got the younger generation that are really gung-ho about this, and that's our future, right? It's, it's the next generation. It's not too much us. We're, we're walking away, but the next generation's coming up, and they're the ones who are gonna make it happen. It's just learn the facts first, and please, you know, Give it the opportunity to see how it's going to work for you. You have the choice. It's yours. Give it a try. That's what I'd say.